we get started, I do want to apologize for the lack of video. I had to, my computer kind of stopped working, so I had to get a new one, which took me a little bit to save up for. And then right when I got my new computer, my hard drive broke, and I lost the footage for the big video I had been working on, and I really do need a hard drive to store a lot of my major files when I'm working on big videos. But I did want to sit down today and do a video talking about death metal. I'll be restarting the process of my big Avatar retrospective this week. I'll probably have already restarted it by the time you guys see this video. But no, I'll be doing that. And I did want to sit down and put something out. And I honestly thought about it. And before I do my My Hero Academia video, which will be out next week, or the week after that, I have some medical stuff to take care of next week. So, I don't know. But before I sit down and do all that, I did want to sit down and talk about Death Metal. Because I do actually like Dark Knight Metal. Now, I have, I've only read it once when it came out, but I liked it. And I, have a, and I have opinions on it. I think it's pretty good. I think it's a little out there. But I want to talk about Death Metal and the overall state of DC. And kind of just talk in this video overall. So first of all, Death Metal issue 1 last week was good. I don't know if I'll do reviews on Death Metal. I'm thinking about maybe doing some sort of comic book weekly podcast where I just talk or live stream where I talk about comics every week. And then I'll do like, I'll do like an anime video every Monday or whatever once a week. And then and then another time during the week I'll do like a comic booky podcast once every week or every two weeks. Right? Talk about whatever. Be it an Arkham game, Marvel, DC, whatever, because I do really, I do read stuff on a weekly basis, comic book wise. That I do think it's easy. It's a lot easier to talk about comic books on a weekly basis than it is to talk about like a series like One Piece. I Maybe mean, it's not nearly as much to do with on doing comics. You can just pick and choose all the time. So I mean, there's so much they can choose from, and that to focus on one thing and one character. But let's talk about death metal. This is the problem with death metal. Honestly, this is my only problem with death metal. It does this thing that books have been doing for a while, but I am kind of sick of it, and Snyder does it often. Snyder's known to do it. First of all, Snyder does that thing he loves to do when he talks about the big end-all threat. Snyder loves the big end-of-the-universe threat. To be honest, it's one of the reasons I stopped reading his Justice League run. I'm going to be honest. I did stop reading his Justice League run because of that. I didn't get very far into it. I barely remember anything about it. I kept up to date with the basic. Like, but Snyder has a tendency to, one, he is weird. By the way, I love Snyder. I like him more on individual books like Batman. But the problem I have with Snyder's Justice League run is that, one... Well, Snyder clearly knows what he's talking about. With Brian Michael Bendit at DC and at Marvel at the end, Civil War II people, I get this vibe from him that he doesn't really care. Like, that he is... I get the vibe that he hasn't read the book. Like, that he just... He, it's not that I don't think he... I, it's not so much that he's disregarding continuity, even though he does. A lot of the time I get the feeling he just doesn't care. Snyder, I know, cares. Snyder knows what he's talking about because, because he referenced Hawkman is an important character in Dark Knight Metal. Hawkman. Hawkman. I mean, Nth Metal is an important part. I mean, he creates Batmanium. Nth Metal. But Snyder has a tendency to look at a project and he'll be like, let's say this toothpick is the Thor Wall. Snyder looks at his, looks at his toothpick and he sees the Thork wall, and he says, okay, so if we break it open, and we break the Thork wall open, what's on the other side? Not, I'm 90% sure Snyder knows what's on the other side is the source, canonically. Now, I am obviously biased, because while I love Snyder, I do prescribe and like Grant Morrison's idea. For those that do not know, if you were to ask Grant Morrison what was on the other side of the Thork wall, he would tell you, that it was the Marvel Universe, which I love. Because for those that do not know, the Thork Wall was created in one of the older Marvel DC crossovers. But Snyder does that. It's like, it's, 
Looking at Barry's like, <laughs> I can't break it. No, but he taped the dark wall, he breaks it in half. Now, instead of doing the thing and being like, the Thoris, he's like, Perpetua. And he's like, Perpetua is the, the monitor's and anti-monitor mother. Now, what that have to do with the over-monitor and all the other monitor crap, I don't know, but I did not read the JL new run, or the JL run by Snyder. I, di I didn't read it. I'm not interested in reading it. I'm really not interested in reading a hundred, in reading a ton of issues of biggest threat. The new version in danger. Biggest threat. Bigger. 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 That's all it is from what I've seen of it. And I'm not interested in that. And Perpetua is like, I, I know Snyder. Now, the, if Snyder stayed at DC, I feel like he'll try to go bigger than Perpetua. He's always saying, it's in my last book. It's in my last, it's in my grand thesis. But then there's always something bigger. Firstly, I understand that the point of JL is that JL is like world and like, obviously a book that is about Superman, Wonder Woman, and Batman teaming up will be grand and grandiose in scale. I get that. And obviously, the, I think if they Superman did it. Like, even if it was just a Superman story, you would need to go universe ending to tell a satisfying fighting based Superman book. Put Wonder Woman in the mix? Wonder Woman isn't able to hurt Superman. So yeah, obviously you need a big end all universal threat, but you also need something you can tie into like Batman, think of Batman like their most profitable character. But when I look at the death metal, for I'm like it's Perpetua and it's the Batman who laughs too, by the way. I'm by the way, great thing, they get rid of the Batman who laughs. Don't get me wrong, I like the Batman who laughs. He's probably the reason I like Dark Knight Metal so much. I own Floppy. I don't buy Floppy. I read everything online on Comicology. Or like I get it from my YouTube channel before I had a job and I had no when I when I had no money, I got it from my like comic historian. And now I buy everything weekly. And now I buy the little bit of weekly reading I do on Comicology. I buy my book. I rarely buy physical floppies. I don't have it with me right now, but I do own. I, it's, not, it's in another place, at another residence. But I do own the floppy from the Batman Who Last Origin. Like, I own that. Like, I own the physical floppy from when that was coming out. So, this is the thing with the floppy. This is the thing. I like the Batman Who Last. I like him in Dark Knight Metal. And then I saw him in something else, and I was like, okay. And then, like, two, then like two three weeks ago, I sat down, and I bought. I went on Comicology, like, I think, like, two, three weeks ago, before Metal came out. And I was like, you know what I'm going to do? I was bored. It was a night like this. It was late. I think it was actually Sunday night, which is the same night I'm recording this, like, two weeks ago. And I went on Comicology, and I stayed up until, like, two in the morning, reading the entire... Reading all of Batman and Superman. I thoroughly enjoyed myself. I think I also I also finished Up in the Sky. I fin I'm catching up on Adventure Continues. I'm just doing a lot of reading. And I remember staring at it and I'm like, again? Okay. And then instead of ending the story, they don't. They then say, oh, no, we're ending it here. And then we're going to go tell more Batman Who Laughs stories somewhere else. Which this made me want to scream. I was like, no. At the end of the day, the Batman Who Laughs should not be the Joker. The Batman Who Laughs should not be oversaturated. I've always been of the opinion that what, the reason the Joker works, and the same logic can be applied to the Batman Who Laughs, is that we don't see him all the time. It's like, you don't see the Joker for like a year and the kill. Imagine it. You don't see the Joker for a year and a half. In, like, a major scheme. Yes, you see him in, like, No Man's Land and stuff like that. He, like, shows up and causes trouble. But there's no, like, major Joker story. Like, there's no Joker war. And then Alan Moore's, like, killing joke. And the Joker does an unspeakable, horrible atrocity. And you're sitting there in your seat, stunned at the new, god-awful, horrific thing DC has shown you on paper. Or on the digital screen nowadays. And I feel like that doesn't work. When you're like. Oh the Joker again. Okay. Like you should be like. Oh my god. what You should be reacting the way Gordon reacts. Which is. Oh my god. What's he going to do this time? Instead of. 
Oh yeah, another Joker book. Okay. Yeah, that's that that fifth. That fifth with the current editorial setting. Like you should that should not be your reaction to a Joker book. It shouldn't. If that's the reaction to a Joker book, DC doing it wrong. That's what was happening with the Batman who laughed. He was just he was everywhere. So when I found out he he even got into Supergirl. And the reason I don't read Supergirl is because she had like nothing to do with anything. Like, that's one of the reasons I don't really read Supergirl. Beyond the fact that I have no idea, through I find Supergirl's history incredibly confusing. Because, like, there's, like, so many versions of the character at this point. Hell, remember the original, original Supergirl? Who was literally that time in the Silver Age that Clark would turn, that some woman mind wiped or controlled Clark into imagining and fantasizing a universe where he is a woman, where he becomes a woman and has to like live in like a Cessus 1950s setting because it's like the 1950s and he called himself Super Sister and his name is Claire Kent. Remember that? That was Supergirl's first appearance. So I understand Supergirl. I like Supergirl, but I find her books kind of hard to follow. I would that's the thing I want to do, but I really need to sit down and do it. Now, the point of this story is that Batman Who Laughed even bled into her book. Like, I started seeing this image of an infected Supergirl, and I'm like, oh my god. I'm like, okay, sure. More Batman Who Laughs. And now you even have Superman Who Laughs. I'm like, that sucks. So, I, I thought that sucked. I, I, flat out, I think it sucks. There's too much Batman who laughs stuff. So I'm very happy when the bull was like, lit, go it, old news now. Hopefully it stays that way. As of the recording of this issue, I've only seen issue one. I don't know about solicitation, I don't know spoilers, please do not spoil me if information is out. I've avoided everything just by not looking for it, because that's easy for me to avoid comic book spoilers, because I'm not that, that involved in that side of the comic book community. I mostly just watch shows from like popular YouTubers and things of that nature. But then really, my favorite comic book channel is Comic Pop, by the way. In case anybody wondering, Comic Pop, awesome channel, back at you, check them out. No, but um, I'm sitting there and I'm watching this show. I'm watching, uh, I'm, I'm watching this thing unfold before me. This Dark Knight Metal, this Dark Knight Death Metal, whatever it's called. I mean, first of all, the title sucks. They're called Death Metal, but not that it's called Dark Knight Death Metal. It's stupid. That's way too convoluted. I mean, in my opinion, like, it's not a universe, DC. It's a series of books. It would be like if they were like, DC Universe, Dead World, DC, Zombie, Dead World. It would be like, no, like, you don't need to say... Like, but what it's about, like, just call it DC Dead World, or whatever. Like, don't do the thing that they're doing when you're like, Dark Knight Metal, Death Metal. That's stu- or Dark Knight Death Metal. It's, it's dumb, I don't like that. I don't like that, that kind of how it's being called. At least, that's the way I've seen it be treated. Maybe I'm an idiot and I'm just seeing it the wrong way. Maybe I'm stupid, which is possible. <laughs> but no, so I'm reading Death Metal, and first of all, kudos to Snyder for using his clout to be like, we're doing a Wonder Woman event. The DC had been scared out of their mind to do a Wonder Woman event. They had the last time they did a Wonder Woman event, it was Amazon's attack. And, well, we all know how that turned out, bees. <laughs> Amazon's attack is so bad. But I, I'll be honest, I've only read bits and pieces. I, I, I read some of it, and I was like, I saw a panel where Batman went, oh god, bees, or whatever. I saw the, the bees panel with Batman, and I said, nope. Nope. And I psyched out. I was like, absolutely not. I was disgusted. But no, and, but ever since then, it's, it's really fascinating that we really don't get Superman events. I mean, we got a Vent Leviathan, but Bendix wrote it, and I didn't like it. <laughs> I don't like... I literally just, I hate everything Bendis did with Superman. The only thing that Bendis did with Superman that I like is he gave him the Trump back. That's the only thing. Which, by the way, is like the height of DC hypocrisy. Then, for years, like, Trump stuck. Superman's gritty and he's mature now. And maturity, maturity, but Trump had no place in modern Superman. 
Brian Michael Bendis, the god of the universe, walked into the room. A new Jaden Christ figure in DC Comics walked in. He says, uh, can, 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 and he's like, hey, do you think that'll make? I hope to give me Superman. I hope to give me Superman. He's coming back. And, and, and DC's just like, yeah, that checks. Yeah, obviously. Who would say anything different? Greatest idea we've ever had. Let's get the Trump back. It's perfect. How? I don't understand how you go from the trunks are stupid and out of date to this. Actually, I do. Brian Michael Bendis had clout in the comic book industry, and DC is paying him an ungodly amount of money that I don't even want to know about. Even though they're in no position to be paying him that much money, because Diamond has now announced they're not giving them the money they deserve. So, I don't know. DC is in no position to be paying Bendik what they're paying him because they, they, they can barely distribute their books. There's a pandemic going on. Way to date this video, Aiden. But you see my point. Like, DC is in no position to be paying Bendik the big bucks for essentially killing Superman. Like, the critter, the book isn't failing sales-wise, from what I understand. But the critical reception I've seen is not great. I don't think people love it. Even the people that... And the thing, even the people who, like, I think are, like, anti-marriage for Superman, which I think is pretty few and far between. I don't think there are many people at this point who are complaining about the Lois and Clark marriage. But I feel like even those people look at John and they're like, Dude, you, we, you were to tell this thing was being developed in all these books. Like, other writers were using this. They, like, Super Sons was fantastic. Super Sons is basically universally acclaimed by everybody who reads it as being fantastic. And he's like, here's an idea. I'll make John 25. I mean, what the hell? But, so I didn't like Bendis. I don't like Event Leviathan. And with the sense of that, nobody's done a Superman or Wonder Woman event, really. We don't get those that often. It's all Batman or Universe hopping, Crisis or Flash. For some reason, Flash gets more events than like Super than Wonder Woman. It's like ridiculous. But I'm standing there and I'm looking at Death Metal and I'm seeing a Wonder Woman event. And first of all, my first reaction is good. But you know what? Snyder, at the end of the day, is critically acclaimed. He has a couple of the New York he has a couple of books that have been the New York Times bestseller bestseller. He, he's an award-winning author. His Batman will run is loved by many. He's great. This book will sell a ton of money. He's one of the top writers at DC right now, objectively speaking. Like he is, like, like DC, he's one of the best writers. He is one of their highest paid writers. He has the thing that put they push him the most. He is one of the top writers in the company from a business standpoint. So again, if this book does well, which it will, people may turn around and maybe we can get Wonder Woman to actually have the more relevant. I don't think she's not relevant, but I mean, it would be nice if Wonder Woman could to go without rebooting her origin long enough. Like, I would look at it like this. Why is it that Batman and Superman get to have two sons who get to go on adventures together and be the super son in this great book that's about legacies of the three great characters of the DC Universe? Why can't Wonder Woman have that? Why can't Wonder Woman have a daughter who can be part of, like, a young Trinity book? Why isn't that a thing? Like, I feel like the next obvious place to go when you're pushing, like, this idea of this next generation Trinity with with the biological children of the character, with Damien and John, and, but, and, like, you have Damien, you have John, the next obvious thing is give Wonder Woman a daughter. And by the way... I've heard some people counter that idea with, but then you'd have to make her pregnant, and how would you, you'd have to, you'd have to, you know, show nine months passing in the DC universe, and it would be harder to do, because how could she fight crime when she's nine months pregnant? My response to that is, Wonder Woman's original origin is she's a baby made of magic mud. Who cares? John, Damien Wayne doesn't even make sense, really. Like, he. John, Jonathan Kent is, an, is a product of conversion. Who cares? Literally, you could say 
Wonder Woman went to another dimension where nine months passed and for her in the time span of a day in the regular DC Universe, and now she's got a baby. In fact, you could even put her in that dimension and just say, time for, and just say the kid is like 10 now. So you can have the kid teaming up with Damien and John. It's not hard to do, people. It's not. So yeah, I'm hoping it gives Wonder Woman more clout. The art is fine. I love seeing T-Ref Batman. I mean, honestly, back to the art. I mean, what what else is there to be say? Capullo. What's there to say? He, he's fantastic. But yeah, the art is fine. I was kind of just wanting to ramble about death metal for a little bit. I don't have much else to say. I don't have any idea where it's going. I'm interested to see. I don't know. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Leave it a like. Great book. If you haven't checked out issue one, check it out. You can get it on Comicsology and on Amazon. DC comes out on Tuesdays now. And yeah, have a great day. Tell me your thoughts on death metal in the comments. And I kind of just wanted to ramble about this book that I thought was really good.